after the completion of fermi theory of beta decay now we are going to deal with a very important problem uh, regarding the beta decay actually you know that parity is one of the fundamental properties of nuclei and uh, it was believed that like a spin momentum energy etc this parity also remains conserved in the different nuclear processes or you may call that in all nuclear processes but uh, you will be surprised that actually there is a violation of parity conservation in the process of beta decay so the sole aim of our lecture on of today is this uh, violation of parity conservation in beta decay in fact uh, you have definitely studied that the parity remains conserved in case of a strong interaction and uh, electromagnetic interactions but uh, in 1956 during the study of tau meson and theta meson it was found that uh, there is an unsolved problem there was a serious problem that uh, actually the parity was not conserved during the transition of this uh, or you can say the decay of this tau meson and the theta meson so this was just a great puzzle of uh, 20th century and this puzzle is actually known as tau theta puzzle in fact uh, in experiment it has been seen that the these two mesons that is tau mesons and theta meson have same mass same half life and same spin since uh, these two particles have same mass same half life and same spin so it was suggested that uh, they are not different particles but they are simply the same particles but uh, when the the study was made on the decay process of this uh, tau plus meson and theta plus meson then again uh, it was uh, observed a surprising results that uh, the decay mode of these two mesons are not identical but they suffer actually the different decay modes you can see i have actually mentioned here that uh, the theta plus meson decays into two pi mesons uh, whereas tau plus pi meson decays into three pi mesons you can see this reaction that this theta plus is decayed into pi plus and pi zero and tau plus actually suffers two types of decay processes in first one this tau plus is actually decayed into pi plus pi minus and again pi plus and in another mode it is decayed into uh, pi plus pi zero and pi zero okay so uh, according to these uh, decay processes you can see that this theta plus is a positive parity state while this theta plus is a negative parity state it means in other words you can say that uh, the theta plus and the tau plus decayed into pions of opposite parity not of same parity okay and hence if parity is to be conserved they must uh, they, they should must be different not identical but as energy mass spin all these properties are same so definitely these particles should be identical but uh, since parity state of the pions obtained after the decay of theta plus and tau plus was different so in fact in 1957 uh, 
it was suggested that parity is not conserved in these processes and since these processes are weak processes and you know that beta decay is also a weak process so in 1957 two great scientists lee and yang claimed that uh, actually the parity will be will not remain conserved in any weak process actually beta decay process is a very good example of the weak process so according to lee and yang in this beta decay process parity will not remain conserved okay so you should note that although this parity remains conserved in case of the strong interaction in case of electromagnetic interaction but in case of weak interaction as for example in process of beta decay this parity does not remain conserved okay now uh, we will explain this fact uh, in detail after a very good uh, experiment some result was obtained and which actually proves that in beta decay process parity will not remain conserved in fact in normal beta decay experiment the momentum pe of the electron is measured a, by measuring the momentum of the recoil nucleus and the momentum of the neutrino you know uh, in case of beta decay the momentum of electron is just equal and opposite to the sum of the momentum of the daughter nucleus that is pd and plus momentum of the neutrino okay so if you want to measure the momentum of this electron you can measure it in terms of the momentum of the daughter nucleus and in and the momentum of the neutrino actually uh, in this uh, beta decay process the interaction term is defined as pe dot p nu this is actually the interaction term and uh, you know pe and p nu <coughs> both are linear momenta and so uh, this product is just a, a scalar because pe and p nu both are actually polar vectors and the dot product or the scalar product of polar vector will be a, a scalar mm -hmm. but uh, if you are talking about the polarized beta active nuclei in fact in mm -hmm. case of polarized beta active nuclei all the intrinsic angular momenta i point in the same direction when all the nuclei will have the angular momentum or the spin in same direction then it is called actually polarized uh, beta active nucleus and in this condition apart from this interaction term that is pe dot p nu there will be another interaction term and in fact uh, why that is uh, what why that term because in this case uh, there will be a term like uh, axial vector and that axial vector is i that is in fact the total angular momentum of the nucleus and you know <coughs> the total angular momentum i of the nucleus is simply the vector sum of the orbital angular momentum l and the spin angular momentum s okay and you know that uh, l is defined by r cross p so you can say that i is equal to r cross p plus s now you know that uh, this l and s both are actually axial vectors okay and since they are axial vectors so this interaction term that is i dot p e will be not a scalar but it is a pseudo scalar okay now uh, when the parity reflection operation is performed in then actually the polar vector pe changes sign okay but uh, the total angular momentum vector i that is a spin of the nucleus does not change sign under the parity operation its sign remains same 
so uh, the observation of pseudo scalars uh, uh, different from zero imply that there will be definitely a violation of parity conservation or the breakdown of parity conservation okay and so you can say that the violation of parity in the process of beta decay or any weak interaction was actually experimentally demonstrated by madam u in the decay of the cobalt 60 nucleus in fact who studied the emission probability of electrons from polarized co60 nuclei and this uh, co60 nuclei actually suffers the gamma Taylor transition and after transition we get the nucleus of 60 and i and the process is like this this uh, cobalt 60 is converted into ni60 and at the same time the electron and the anti neutrino are created and emitted actually in this process you can see that the change in the total angular momentum i is equal to zero and there is no parity change and the electron spin is parallel to the anti neutrino spin okay and uh, now you can see actually the degree of polarization of the nuclei can be measured by means of the n isotropy of the gamma rays following the beta decay and you can see here actually in initial state this co60 has the total spin angular momentum phi and its uh, parity is positive and after this uh, beta minus emission this nucleus actually transits into a state where its uh, angular momentum is 4 and the parity is again positive and then actually this is one of the excited states of this co60 and uh, after emitting a gamma photon this nucleus is in the lower excited state where its total angular momentum is 2 and parity is again positive and after the next uh, uh, emission of gamma photon it's uh, it is converted into ni60 uh, where the total angular momentum of this nucleus is 0 and uh, parity is positive so this is actually the scheme uh, how this uh, co60 is uh, converted into Ni60. Now see the mirror operation or the symmetry operation uh, performed on this uh, nucleus. In fact uh, you can see uh, here this uh, sphere just uh, represents a nucleus and I have mentioned that uh, this arrow sign simply says that the direction of a spin is anti-clockwise and this arrow head actually represent the direction of its spin okay and these arrow sign actually represents the direction of emission of the electron and uh, neutrino okay so in fact uh, originally you can see that this uh, spin direction is just opposite to the direction of the electron spin but when uh, there will be uh, if you imagine that there is a mirror and we see the images of this nucleus in that mirror then uh, you can see that the direction of the emission remains same you can see this arrowhead which actually denotes the direction of emission that remains same but the direction of the spin is just reversed okay so in this figure i have shown that uh, the CO60 nucleus undergoing beta minus decay and its mirror image. Actually, it is clear from this mirroring reverse, it is clear from this figure that after this mirroring effect is what? This, is, this just reverses the spin sense 
and hence inverts the spin vector but leaves the emission direction unchanged as you can see this from this figure that spin direction remains uh, is just inverted it was in fact uh, in fact uh, anti clockwise uh, and uh, in the mirror image it is just uh, clock in clockwise sense okay but uh, the direction of emission uh, is not changed it remains same actually the parity conservation would require the decay probabilities to be the same in both cases and so the beta intensity anti parallel to the nuclear spin direction should be same as that along the nuclear spin direction okay so if uh, be, if the parity will remain conserved then the probability of beta intensity uh, in case of this nucleus uh, where the spin direction is up and uh, in the image where the spin direction is down must be same but if this symmetry does not hold there is an asymmetry it means the intensity of beta uh, inten beta intensity is different in these two cases then that will be just due to the non conservation of parity so any asymmetry leads to the uh, to the non conservation of parity so i have mentioned it here that any asymmetry would be due to the non conservation of parity actually in this lecture i have not uh, detailed the experiment done by you but i have mentioned what actually in that experiment uh, was observed in fact in whose experiment it was observed that the angular distribution of beta rays from polarized nucleus is not symmetrical about a plane through the nucleus perpendicular to the axis of polarization it was not uh, symmetrical but asymmetrical okay and at the same time the another important observation was electrons emitted have their spins preferentially anti parallel to their direction of travel okay you can see it here that uh, electron is actually emitted in downward direction here you can see and the spin direction is upward so this is actually the preferred direction okay but in mirror image both are in the same direction so actually we simply say that electrons emitted have their spins preferentially anti parallel to their direction of travel and opposite occurs for the positrons it means if positron is emitted that is you are talking about the beta plus decay then actually there will be just the emission of electron in the direction of the spin so actually there is an asymmetry and uh, i have told you earlier that if there will be an asymmetry that will confirm that uh, parity does not remain conserved in this beta decay process and since in whose exp experiment asymmetry was observed so this asymmetry confirms the violation of the parity conservation in beta decay okay so i hope you have understand uh, that how we can explain that the parity does not remain conserved in beta decay process or in any weak interaction okay